welcome everyone. We're just going to give everyone a few more minutes uh, so they can join. Um, thank you so much for taking the time um, as well to come here. May I just have a show of hands of uh, who has been inspected in the last 12 months? Just put it on the chat if you have been inspected in the last 12 months. Okay, good, good. Wow, okay, plenty of you have been inspected in the last 12 months. Hopefully this webinar will help you understand a bit as well in the context of, um, of, of your inspection and potentially how can you do better. Hopefully most of you got outstanding. And that's what we're here for uh, as well to help you kind of um, support you on this journey as well. And I think we have plenty of you already. So let's get started. So once again, welcome everyone um, to this webinar, uh, best practices uh, for achieving outstanding at your next CTC inspection. Uh, we're super glad that all of you could join uh, as well. So really, thank you so much. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. The session will be recorded. We will send um, a version of this session to you guys afterwards. If you have any questions, pop it on the Q&A box. It's like these two uh, speech bubbles that you can find on your Zoom account. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll have a post-webinar survey. And this post-webinar survey is just for us to understand if we're providing you valuable insights. So it's a way of us understanding if you guys uh, found this useful. If you found it, we can do more of it. If you didn't find it, we need to uh, find ways to change it. So any feedback is welcome after the session. Okay. Now, uh, just a bit on the session. So uh, the session will be divided in two. Uh, first, um, our lovely um, um, friends and partners at uh, SIA Care Improvement Associates. We'll talk about how to prepare for the CQC inspection, rating, characteristics, inspections, et cetera, et cetera. Then we'll open the floor a bit for a, a few questions uh, that you might have. And then at the end, we'll just go uh, briefly how Birdie can help you as well on your next CQT inspection and our um, top tips and best practices uh, for you as well. Um, and so without further ado, uh, let me start with the introductions. Um, Scarlett, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Scarlett. I'm a customer success manager here at Birdie. So I help our partners make the most out of the product. Um, and yeah. That's me. Perfect. Thank you so much, Scarlett. Uh, and Georgina, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Georgina Turner. I'm going to be doing this session with you today. And when we go to the slides, I will um, tell you a bit more about myself. Okay, let's do that. I'll stop sharing my screen. Georgina, you can start sharing your Wish screen. Wish me luck sharing the screen, everybody. Right, can you see it? Has it worked? It's always great when things actually work, which is fab. Right, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, really nice that so many of you could come today. And if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, we can't guarantee we can answer all of them, but I will try my best. And if I don't know the answer, then hopefully you'll be able to get someone else who will know the answer. So Today, um, well, I'll firstly, I'll introduce myself so you know a little bit about me before I start. So um, I work for um, Care um, Improvement Associates and um, doing a lot of different mock inspections and helping providers get ready for inspection. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and my background is quite varied and I always give people a, a bit of information because it might help tailor your questions. So basically, I've been a registered nurse, worryingly enough, for over 20 years. And I've worked in adult social care, nursing homes, dom care, supported living, private hospitals, you name it, for a long time. I then did um, a law degree and a law master's, and I specialise in quality improvement and things like consent at the time. 
At present, I work for um, urgent care and out of hours and GP practices, helping them with their governance. I'm their governance um, lead nurse. And I also work for a private hospital in Lancashire as their governance and quality manager. I have done 10 years in NHS audit for my SINs. And so I um, do specialise in audit. And the areas that I do a lot of work in are medicines management, excuse me, I keep going to sneeze, from a governance perspective, um, audit, care planning. And I also work for the CQC as a specialist professional advisor. But everything in this webinar today is completely my opinion from my experience and my research and so it is not um, it's not the CQC's opinion at all. So basically um, I'm going to just flip through these slides. Fingers crossed they want to work. Oh great. So just to recap then um, obviously today in this capacity I'm working for Care Improvement Associates and a lot of you may have heard them before and of course of, of Birdie Care. So if you need anything, please feel free to get in touch with them after the webinar. So we're not going through all of these in great depth because as you, I'm sure you all know, this is an absolutely massive area. I literally do training sessions on a variety of different CQC compliance areas and they take from between an hour to six hours to even to two days. Um, which I don't know how people manage, but th they do with lots and lots of breaks and sleep. So it is a um, it is a wide, wide topic. So what I'm going to do today is give you some top tips for inspection. So a lot of you will have already been inspected before and you, know, we, you may think, well, we know this, but I think that it's always good to recap on how you can get the best out of your inspection and also about any areas that people may struggle with because there's themes and trends of areas that people tend to struggle with. And if any of you have read things like the state of care report that the CQC publish each year, you will see some of the themes and trends where people really struggle. And sometimes it is really difficult. You know, we, we really want to get an outstanding rating. You know, that's ideal. But, you know, the CQC inspectors are coming in and they are looking for good. They are always very much aware that there'll be outstanding practices and they will be aware and looking for those. But when it comes down to it, you know, for things like tendering, commissioning, you want to be good. In, you know, in a brilliant world, we also want def um, different aspects of outstanding as well and for me personally if it was my business I would love to have an outstanding in caring because when it comes down to it that's why we've come into this service you know we, we haven't come into the service to make money we've come into the service to provide really good quality care for um for our service users our clients and our patients so basically do excuse me so I'll go through a few different slides today and, you know, obviously feel free, as I said, to put questions in the chat and we can see what we can do to help you. But one thing I always want to make sure people are aware of, and again, a lot of you may know this, there are an awful lot of changes going on in the CQC at the moment, especially around the, I say the new strategy, it's not really new, it's like a year old now, but it feels like it's the new strategy. And I you know, I, I spend a lot of time training on the strategy, but it does take hours. So I'm just not going to be going into that depth in any way at all today. So one thing I should definitely um, advise people to do is to make sure that you keep up to date with CQC emails. And I know um, I, I did notice, and I've not seen this before, you had a little thing there where you can raise your hands. Now, I've not seen that on Zoom before. I've obviously not updated my Zoom. But I was wondering, did any of you, uh, you can put in the chat, and if you don't mind, I, I won't go into the chat, but if one of our lovely panel can look at the chat, because I'll get myself distracted. Um, have any of you gone to the CQC webinar sessions, and were they helpful? Might get some interesting um, chats, because they did about three or what four, actually a couple of months ago explaining about the new single assessment framework so I was wondering if anybody went what they thought of them and again as I've mentioned earlier all the things I'm talking about today are my own opinion and not of the CQCs again based on my experience because I've been doing this sector for quite a while so we have do a we have many people who yeah Abby said yes um 
I think even Abby said it found it useful as well. Uh, Saima also attended as well. Um, yeah, and Sarah also found it um, useful as well. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, that's really good. That's really good to know. At first, I have to say, as I said, the opinions are my own. I found it a little bit confusing because I, for my sins, had to go to four of them because of the different areas that I work in. So I support GP practices one day. Then the next day I'll be supporting a, a hospital. The next day I'll be working for a care home. It's so varied. And as we stand right at this moment, as all of you will know who's experienced in this, We've got different frameworks, we've got different key lines of inquiry, different rating characteristics, and it's quite confusing. But as a CQC, you're going to be moving to the single assessment framework. Hopefully, this will help. And it says on the slide here, um, you know, to talk about the key lines of inquiry. Now, I just wanted to double check that you guys are all aware and picked up from the webinars, because some of the CQC webinars told you, and some of them didn't, that as far as I am aware, the key lines of inquiry are being replaced with quality statements, I and we statements, and they are aimed at good. And they're still being worked on. They're going to be tailored to each service, but the key lines of inquiry, you know, like the hundreds of questions that we have are going to be um, removed and replaced. I think the problem is when people prepare for inspection using the key lines of inquiry, which a lot of people have done, they are very good, but as a lot of people will probably know, they overlap and cross over. And if you're trying to file evidence based on key lines of inquiry, that can be quite problematic and extremely time consuming. So one of my tips, again, this is my personal opinion for people when they are getting ready for inspection and you're trying to group your evidence. And I've been telling my clients this for years is to look at filing evidence based on the regulations which we're going to talk about in a minute because the regulations obviously the, the law they're not going to be changing anytime soon and it's much easier to base them on those regulations they are also the fundamental standards so we all know or anyone who's you know been in care for a while when they first came into place you know the fundamental standards are extremely important they're a guide um, and a standard so we know that we mustn't go below these fundamental standards these are what we are expected to provide and on the CQC's website you've got a lot of information there for the public about the fundamental standards and things like the duty of candor, um, they all came into place as part of the mid staffure hospital review. And so a lot of these things that were really focused on were expand um, were strengthened from past concerns or problems within the system. And they really needed to have a stronger um, regulation format and process. And of course, it's changing. So I definitely just recommend anybody signs up for CQC emails. But also, I don't know if any of you have signed up for CQC Citizen Lab. So if anyone could put in the chat, if you've signed up for CQC Citizen Lab, definitely worth signing up for because even though I'm not going through this today they are very helpful because if there's anything new like these quality statements that I was talking about that are supposed to be replacing the key lines of inquiry they are placed on this forum um, and you can go in and you can complete surveys about it you can put your comments you can read things before they're actually put into the public domain so I definitely think you just google cqc citizen lab um if you if you you know find me on linkedin i did a post about it with a link because i found that it was really helpful and a lot of people haven't actually joined up and it's a way of being proactive so for me i knew that there was going to be changes to the key lines of inquiry quite a few months ago so i started to think in a different way so when i started my new um, out of hours urgent care and gp practice um, company in january after being in audit for 10 years they were about to file all their evidence under key lines of inquiry in readiness for their inspections, including for the GP practices. But I found that it wouldn't be a good fit if things are going to change. So it's just something that you should definitely sign up for. Um, I'm not sure from the chat, has anyone signed up for it at all? 
A couple of people said yes. Well, I think Sarah said yes. Uh, others said no. Uh, but someone actually very useful uh, just posted a link as oh, well. Fab. To sign up. Thank you so much. This is that's a, really a helpful. Community in action. Yeah, I, I can't multitask, I'm afraid. Not when it comes onto computers. So if I did it, you'd probably lose me. So that's why I'm not going onto the chat. And I always kindly have someone to it to moderate them. So that's great. It's very helpful. So going back to the fundamental standards. So, you know, we know how important these are, that we meet them. But you'd be surprised, or I mean, again, some of you may also be in this category. And, you know, it's something that I do see a lot the people don't always realize and know the regulations. So the regulations and the fundamental standards are mirrored um, in the blue box. So um, forgetting about the orange box, and you'll be glad to know I'm not teaching you about the regulations today because I do a whole session on that. Then you can see poor people's eyes glazing over because it is quite intense. But if you look at the regulations from Regulation 9 to Regulation 20A, you will see that these are the fundamental standards and we can map all of our evidence based on these regulations. And when it comes down to it, if you are being inspected and you're going to breach anything, at the bottom of your report, there will be about what regulation you've breached. So that's why it's very important that, regu that registered managers know about the fundamental standards and there is a really good guidance document about the regulations and the fundamental standards on the CQC's website. It is 120 pages long, I have to say, which sounds horrific, but it's actually very, very straightforward. And I still dip into it all the time just to refocus myself, because when I'm looking at a regulation, um, for example, you know, safe care and treatment, as a lot of you will know, it's absolutely massive, you know, medicines management, infection prevention and control, but they overlap as well. So I definitely think my advice to people is to know the regulations. If you download the actual whole regulation guidance from the CQC, I think this slide is something like page two or three, it's the index, put it up in your office, it eventually it will come second nature so if the CQC are talking to you perhaps about you know care planning you know you'd be able confident to say yes of course under regulation nine person-centered care this is the system we use to make sure that our care plans are up to date that they're person-centered that they're easy to access that they are safe and that they are very much a holistic process so again look at the regulations it is important and for any of the people who are about to be registered managers because I do do a lot of mentoring with people I always say know these regulations well it really will help you and it will help you going forward for your inspections just to refocus I also find that people benefit from talking about them at team meetings but we'll talk about that shortly I'm just going to keep an eye on the time. Please wave at me if I'm being a bit too slow. And apologies, apologies to everyone for me talking quite fast. I'm very conscious of the time, you see, and I tend to get distracted because there's so much to tell you. OK, so the CQC inspection regime as it is at the moment. So a lot of you will be aware of this. It was, has been their model for quite a while. And a lot of you will be aware we have the five key questions in the middle. Are we safe, effective, caring, responsive and well-led? And they are not changing. And the ratings are not changing either. The CQC are still doing, as they have always done, a lot of work behind the scenes before they even come out to inspect you. And, and that won't change. It will just be strengthened and they'll be using more data to really understand your service to hopefully minimise the amount of information they're going to be requesting off you. Because a lot of people who've been inspected will be very much aware of how stressful it is when you get asked to provide a lot of information very very quickly and I always say if you can and you suddenly are inspected and you've not been given notice or if you've been given notice if it was me I would allocate I say a runner somebody who knows what everything is filed if it's in paper or um, another person apart from the registered manager who knows where any electronic files are kept then that's why I say to people if you can store information by regulation and they ask you about you know 
about consent. You could go and find all your templates. Um, you could find everything to do with safeguarding and it's all linked to regulation and it should be quite quick. Ideally, you could file your emails as well as long as, you know, they're not confidential under different regulations as well with password protect them, the files if they're electronic. I think pre um, preparation, as I'm sure you all know, is key and it's very difficult for you when you're still reeling from COVID and firefighting with lack of staffing and all the other problems that the providers will have. And I do work for registered managers and providers more than I work for the CQC. So that's why I very much see it from the provider's angle, even though I still do a lot of inspections for the CQC as an advisor. So basically, I'm just double checking, I've not missed anything out before I tell you. So and a lot of you will still be asked to do the annual PIRs. But when I was talking, again, this is my personal opinion, when I was talking to a inspector last week, they mentioned that the PIRs are not going to be requested in the future. But I said, don't quote me on this, just sort of watch this space, be aware of any updates from the CQC. And obviously, please fill them out if you get asked to do them. They are very important documents take time to fill them out to make sure that you get someone to help you and um, if you need any advice you know reach out to other providers who filled them in because that gives the CQC an idea of where you're at at the moment and it's important to be honest if there's anything you are struggling with then you know do mention that in there because I think for example if they came in and found that you know your care plan systems were paper-based and they were absolutely awful because you know for many different reasons you know no staff new service whatever it was it's better to say that we've reflected and realized some of our systems and processes aren't as good as we want them to be but moving forward and by a specific deadline this is what we're going to be doing so at least then the cqc know that you um that you are being proactive and that you are reflecting on your practice so as we know, you know, the CQC are looking for good. And I think it's always important to remember that the CQC will be talking to, you know, commissioners. If you're involved with charities, you know, they could talk to GP practices or for health professionals or for services that interlink with you and the local systems about your service before they inspect, because they want to gather a picture about um, any system problems. So, for example, if there's a, a, a problem with, um, I know I'm being biased here, but with urgent care, then it's going to have a knock on effect or GP practices and accessing. It's going to have a knock on effect on A&E. So they're aware that if there's if there's problems in the hospitals, there could be then problems with um, adult social care, not enough beds. You know, everything is interlinked. They try and get a good picture before they come out. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. Okay. So basically, people you know say, how long do inspections last? Well, again, from my personal opinion in adult social care, and apologies, I don't know if you're all from that sector, that it could be a day, it could be it could be a week. You don't know. I have been to inspections where there's just been one inspector, where there's been the inspector and myself as a professional um, advisor. And I've also been to inspections where, and I am genuinely not joking, there was 10 of us in a, um, a small care home. And that was very, very, very unusual. I've not seen that before. And that was a few years ago. But basically, in the past, a lot of you will be very much aware that if you were if you were good or outstanding, you technically have 30 months until your next inspection. Then that was what was written down. That was the, the normal process. And then if you were requires improvements, it would be 12 months. If you were inadequate, um, excuse me, it could be um, six months because you'd be put in special measures. And so we're sort of used to that time scale. But the problem was a lot of people can be complacent and I have supported clients where they got a good and then you know 30 months is a very long time you could have a lot of changes in that time and they, you may um, you know they may not be good anymore I've seen services that were outstanding and then in that 30 month time period 
they have changed. So things happen and things change. So the CQC were very much aware of this by what I'm getting from the, the research, the webinars I've attended and from my um, chats with different people. And they're really aiming for the inspections to be more fluid and in real time. So a lot of you would have seen the statements that are put up on the website, CQC website now about your providers. So, you know, every month they will um, technically be looking at your data to see if you are um, a high risk. And they will put a statement on the CQC's website, you know, saying that, you know, there's, there's you know, inspections, you know, imminent. They have their specific wording, which escapes me now. So if you haven't been onto your CQC um, inspection page, it's worth just having a look and just to see if something's on there about inspections. And if the CQC are concerned, because now it's all going to be based on risk. So they, they banned them as far as I'm aware. Um, I did have I did work with an inspector last week, um, but it was a, a different type of inspection. So if you're not high risk, it will just be business as usual. And they'll carry on collecting the data in the background. If you are slightly higher risk, they may contact you and ask you for some extra evidence or any information. Or if there is a big concern, a big risk, they could come and inspect you. They may or may give notice. It is completely up to them and depends on what service that you are with. And excuse me, the ratings are still going to stay the same. So that's good. One thing that they see, you have mentioned at the webinars, if anyone else has picked it up, is that they are hoping to clarify and give more information about what really does constitute outstanding, because there is a lot of unclarity out there. So we have the rating characteristics, which are at the back of the current key lines of inquiry, which are still in place and they are still using. And that will say what they expect uh, outstanding service provider to be like against the five key questions. So that is how it is now. So please continue to follow that. But apparently new um, and more detailed information is going to be published by them. So hopefully that will be really helpful going forward. Just to recap, if anyone hasn't been inspected before. So again, this is quite short. I mean, how am I doing for time? Sorry. I'm just asking my lovely moderators. Yeah, so uh, let's say five more minutes. That's fine. You see, I'm used to doing really long sessions, so I'm trying to be to be brief. Okay, so you know we know everyone is, of course, when it comes to adult social care. A lot of people really worry about the CQC inspections, you know, and, and if they haven't been given notice, the ones that where they, they just turn up. And as I said about the preparation is key. Start to look at the evidence you have now and also really think if the registered manager isn't isn't in, they're on holiday, they're sick. What business continuity plans do you have in place? Because it does happen quite a lot. Um, and uh, it's, it's certainly not on purpose where the CQC will come and inspect for the unannounced inspections and the register manager is not there. And it is really, for me personally, again, my opinion, it's like a single point of failure. If the register manager is the only person that can access key documents, evidence, policies and procedures. So you always need to prepare a backup plan have your business continuity plans in place, make sure they could have about CQC inspection. Who holds the evidence? Where can it be found? Are the people who are on call that you can ring up and say, could you come in and be a runner because the, the CQC are here today and we need extra information. And of course, on arrival, I think it's very important to make sure that you know that you find them a safe space to work and that when you answer the door, I know it's back to basics here, professional smart uniform if you wear uniforms asking them to just you know to sign in and um, again everything's changing to do with covid measures and checking the lft tests and we're not going to talk about that today because it is another topic on its own make sure you know what's the most up-to-date guidance is before you let anybody into your service check their id make you know ask them to wait while you go and get the registered manager or somebody and um, just make sure that they are let in safely there's been a, quite a few instances on inspections where doors have been propped open and we've been able to just walk in and these services have had you know dolls in place and it's been quite concerning so make sure that you know all the doors are locked as you normally would to keep your clients safe um 
again, very, very quickly, because I'm conscious of the time, we have the inspection, which, as I said, could take several days. It'll ask for lots of information, give them a safe, secure place to work for them to meet because they meet regularly throughout the day. They should feed back to you um, sort of a, a formal feedback session. They may or may not give you notes. Everyone um, is different. Um, when I do the, when I've done the inspections, they'll have a different process and they will send the report back to you for factual accuracy and they'll give you a time frame. And then, of course, if there's anything that's not factually accurate, you must contact them. Don't just leave it, contact them and they will be able to help you. And then once everyone's happy with that, they will publish the report and make sure that you display your ratings, download a poster, get that out and put on your website and in your main office of work. Very quickly, the key risk areas that I find that people breach are person-centered care, so care planning, safe care and treatment, medicines management, infection prevention and control, good governance, which of course is absolutely massive. So that is well-led. So there's a, it's, it's vast, or your policies and procedures, your business continuity and staffing. Now, Everyone has a lot of problems with staffing. We completely understand that it has been very difficult for all of you during the pandemic. And it is difficult um, going forward. And it always has been in adult social care. So we just have to, um, to hope in the future that it, is, it improves and the pay increases, ideally. So very quickly, again, because of time, be aware of things like audit. So under Regulation 17, good governance, well-led, you want to make sure that that you produce regular audits. You have an annual audit schedule that you have very clear actions from your audits and they are completed in a timely manner. I do hold sessions on audits, as you can imagine, after 10 years of doing audits. So I won't harp on about them. But a lot of people, they'll do audits as a tick box exercise and they won't learn from them bring your audit results back to a key meeting. Staff meetings are important to make sure that we know where we're on track, where we're not on track, what we could do to improve them and to discuss lessons learned. If you have a very massive audit schedule, which isn't realistic, you could set yourself up to fail. So make sure you have set day, um, set months and time periods for your audits. Don't think you can do 50 audits in a month. It's not going to be realistic unless you've got a massive team. Um, really think about what is important, like medicines management, health and safety, these key audits that need to be done monthly. What can be done bi-monthly, quarterly, annually even? Poor medicine, medicines management, huge topic on its own. Again, I, I do sessions on medicines management and the governance procedures, but I'm sure you'll all know the areas that, that happen in, in dom care and home care and care homes, you know, missed, med missed medications, client um, staff not signing, medication errors, um, poor practices. It is absolutely vast. And, you know, make sure that you're aware of your nice guidance because people, um, you know, fall down on this area. They don't read the nice guidance appropriate to their service. So there's two different ones for care homes and for adult social care. And again, make sure you have staff meetings, which you may think, well, it's all well and good during a pandemic and we've not been able to get together think out the box if you can think of virtual meetings making sure people are included vary your times people have carers caring responsibilities could you do your meeting in the evening could you do it in the morning could you do it in lunchtime could you swap them around on different days because if you always do it on a wednesday and bob never works on a wednesday bob's excluded so think about that and again my personal opinion pay your staff for meetings. Otherwise, you're not going to get good attendance. Um, I think that's particularly important. And again, very quickly, because I know I'll have to hand over, focus areas for the CQC from what I am seeing from my research, equality, diversity and human rights. It has been a focus for years, but there are some really good documents out there. Uh, ooh, there's a document called Equally Outstanding which is really helpful for case studies and ideas for those who are aiming for outstanding. It's really good, more practical. We won't go into all of these, but oral healthcare is extremely important. 
make sure you read the, uh, the NICE guidance and the CQC's guidance on oral health care. This is definitely going to be within inspections. It is very important and it's often a neglected area. People don't put enough detail and they just sort of lump it all together under personal care. And importantly, make sure that you embrace innovation if you want to get to that um, outstanding. We're looking at, you know, innovation, you know, you're looking at what outcomes have you achieved to make sure that your service users have had outstanding care, because that is, is key. You may have put something in place, but so what? What has it done for your actual service user? You need to be able to evidence that. And that's harder than you think sometimes. So um, again, I do whole sessions on that. So um, I shall make it very brief. Basically, always be focused on continuous quality improvement because it just, as you know, it never stops. Constantly evolves. There's always something to learn. I do this five, six days a week and I'm constantly learning. So I'm really sorry that was brief and I hope it has been helpful and it's very nice to meet you all. Thank you so much, uh, Georgina. Just um, in the interest of time, we're gonna move the Q&A for the last bit. Um, but if you do have any questions for Georgina, you can put it on the Q&A box, you can put it on the chat and we'll see if we have time at the end to answer. Uh, over to you, Scarlett. Great, thank you so much. So I'm gonna share my screen. Sorry, if... Scarlett, would help if I stop yeah, sharing, no. wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? That's yeah, fair. that's brilliant, that. thank you. Um, okay, so there we go. Um, Georgina, thank you so much. Um, I know all our partners would have found this so, so helpful. Um, a lot of changes, of course, as we heard about the clothes and things, a lot to be content, you know, a lot, lot to come about. So, um, you know, we'll do our best to do our research as well and make sure we can support you as much as possible. So what I'm going to go through quickly is just how we can best support you. So we like to think of this kind of scenario first um, of how a common kind of CQC scenario could happen. So you're working, CQC calls, you're about to inspect it. You're going to panic. You've got to try and find some reports, try and find what you're missing. It can be time consuming, complicated and often super manual. What our mission is when it comes to CQC is to try and have a day like this. So you're working, then CQC calls, you're going to inspect it, you relax, you've got Birdie and you've got the analytics to be able to make sure that you are ready. So when I'm going to just go through quickly kind of the actions and evidence side and then the data and proof side. So the actions and evidence side is what you would do actually on Birdie, you know, every day, kind of your care logs, your MAR charts, things like that. Um, and then we've got the data and the proof. So this is more the analytics side, which I'll then go on to. So again, this is just going to be super, super high level, but I just want to show you the kind of few things that we can really help you with. Firstly, our About Me. Our About Me is a person-centered um, product made based on the Chloe's. And our partners who know us, we build everything from you. This is a prime example. We got our research, we understood what our agencies needed to do to evidence, and we built this, this about me in line with that. Um, the next one that is actually just about to be released is a client feed. This is to help you seamlessly evidence. It's got all of the notes, alerts, visits aggregated into one, one place for you to be able to action and see. We've then got our care assessments. So we just heard about how important oral hygiene is and oral care. This is how you can start to create, well, write assessments based on this in a timely and effective way that you will then be able to audit quickly, update and evidence. We've then got our visit planning feature. So this is about tailoring and making really responsive uh, and person-centered visit plans, scheduling tasks and medications to certain times and dates. You're able to schedule what should be done and what should not be done. And that's also what's gonna later come into the auditing. But the most important part here is that we really try and work to make sure that you are safe by not allowing carers to check out of a visit until all medication has been recorded really trying to reduce your time auditing later and just capturing everything instantly. Um, and again, this is just looking at what we can see, what has been done and not done. 
So that's kind of the actions and evidence based on the agency hub that I wanted to show you. But then we've got things on the auditing side and the care auditing side. And we've done a lot of research onto this and we've realized there's a lot of problems that our agencies can encounter. It can be so hard to keep tabs on everything. Um, business management could be deprioritized because you're really trying to sort out one thing at a time. It can be time consuming, multiple systems. Um, yeah, that, that says it all, doesn't it? Paper-based maybe, some bit on the one computer, really trying to bring this again together for you to really reduce this pain. Lastly, it's costly. You know, we really want to enhance your profitability by using Birdie and working so you can work in an efficient way as well. And so this is where the Birdie analytics come into. So you have a series of dashboards and enable you to audit retrospectively or also lifetime. So pulling out, okay, I want to look at all my clients who've had refused medication today. You're able to do that. Or for example, you want to look at the last six months where some tasks have not been completed. This is what the tool will enable you to do. Most importantly, we've built a Q score, which um, really helps our agencies with CQC. So this is built in lines with the Chloe's, but of course, as we know, there's a lot of change in things, but we still believe that um, it can give you a good insight into what's going on. Apologies so, for that, Scarlett. No worries. <laughs> this, this is just a heads up. It's just a heads up. So, you know, to, do keep using the Chloe's because just what I hadn't said, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, that they're not they're doing pilots quarter three this year apparently looking at these changes and it won't be till spring next year so please carry on everybody as you are this is just going forward I am always thinking about the future so brilliant sorry Scarlett I shall be quiet no that's good no <laughs> thanks for interjecting there because yeah that's really great to know so yeah we can all keep keep on our toes um but for now, this Q score can be super super useful um so it breaks down into care delivery and care planning how can you make sure that all your clients' care plans have person-centered notes, are recently updated with care tasks? And this is exactly where you can start to begin this journey. Um, and so with that in mind, we hope that your version of Tuesday would be this, with everything you need. But it doesn't stop there. We really have a team that's going to support you as well. So you have your onboarding team. They help you implement Verdi. You know, they're really they're there on hand. We then have your support, our support team who are best in the industry with less than 10 minute response time during working hours. So this is where you can really make sure your care is on top of using the app. Um, and then lastly, we've got us. So we're really here to do the kind of webinars like this, where we'll be doing more on the Q score, Birdie Analytics, more CQC stuff yet to come. Um, and that's it from me. Thank you so much, Scarlett. Yeah, I think that was a great overview. We are planning more webinars, more CQC related webinars uh, as well. Um, and um, and yeah, it was a pleasure to have you guys here. I just wanted to ask, does anyone has any questions? You can put it on the chat box, you can put it on the Q&A. Any questions for Scarlett or Georgina? We have a shy audience. Great, uh, just to let you know, obviously, if you would like uh, support doing your CQC inspections, uh, CMX makes um, mock inspections. It supports agencies full end to end as well. If you want to get ready before as well, please contact the, contact them. If you're a current Birdie customer as well, and you would like to know more about how Birdie can help you support, get in touch with your customer uh, success manager. They're able to redirect you as well. And also, uh, we are going to have a more in-depth webinar on the specific features of Birdie and how we can help you achieve a great CQC score. Again, we are a tool. You do amazing work. We're just here to help you evidence that amazing work that you do. Uh, and with the right advice with people from people like uh, Georgina, you are able to be outstanding. I don't think it should be anyone's ambition not to be outstanding as well. And I know you all want to be, it's just the evidence and the whole process is just a burden on top of all your other responsibilities. Um, um, cool. Let me just check if we had any questions it's very quickly. Okay, when I queried about uh, care auditing, um, how can we do this in, in Birdie? Adriana Kokut um, asked. Um, Scarlett. Yeah. So yeah, um, Adriana, if you want to get in touch with the support team and we'll be able to set up a meeting and help you just 
to be able to do this. It is through our Birdie Analytics tool, um, some of the points I've shown you. Um, but then some of the other features as well, just please get in touch about whatever you've seen today. Um, so yeah, the email is support at birdie.care and we'll be able to direct you to the right place. And this goes for all our partners. So Tina, two questions for you. I think they might be quite quick. Can we request an inspection as a newly registered care agency? It'd be great if we could. Um, unfortunately, no. They're going by risk and there's a backlog. Again, again, this is what I'm hearing. So, you know, it's not CQC directly. But I, I work with a lot of clients and they are, for example, case managers, um, where like brain injury clients at home, and they've just been registered and it could have been like six months to a year. Normally, the CQC would have inspected them within the first 12 months but because there's a big backlog. They're going by risk. So what's quite upsetting for some people is you've been you've already been registered, you've been working and you could be still working for over a year and you've not had an inspection and that's when mock inspections are very helpful. And so that's what I tend to advise because you just don't know what's going to happen. And if you're not if you're not triggering any risks, and when I say risks, I mean like, you know, loads of you could have loads of complaints or concerns or feedback on the CQC's website about your service, or your commissioners might be saying, Oh, I'm not very happy about this service. There's loads of safeguarding, loads of notifications that don't seem right then you might be seen as higher risk and more likely to be inspected. So this is what I'm gathering from my discussions and attendance at the CQC webinars. So it is really frustrating. I've got a lot of clients that really want an inspection because they've worked so hard over COVID and there requires improvement. And they're like, please inspect us. We are good. We're outstanding. And we want to have this rating for our tendering processes because it will affect tendering. So I'm sorry that that's not exactly positive, but that is what I'm hearing so far. One last question for you, uh, Georgina. Uh, I had my PIR form sent to the CQC. How soon should I expect to meet my first inspection? I think this is connected to what you just censored, isn't it? Well, yeah, well, with the PIR, originally we sort of knew, I say we, this is what I'm gathering from my clients. It could be, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks, and you may get inspected. Now, I genuinely do not know. So I know that's not very helpful because it's so fluid and they're changing things. Um, you might not get inspected, but you might get inspected. So if I was everybody, I would prepare as if you're going to be inspected because really every day you should be prepared for an inspection. And I know that sounds like, you know, I'm obviously not doing the, all the hard work that you guys have to do, but you have to constantly think about um, the future and preparation. It will make your life so much easier if you start it tomorrow in case you're inspected so when they come and typical you'll be on holidays everyone will be off sick there'll be a disaster for example you could think do you know what we've got this we've got everything ready so just start now it'll make you feel so much more confident because I have a lot of really stressed clients who get so upset um but some of them really come back to me and say oh I, I loved my inspection it was really it was really positive I could show all this good stuff I've done so just just start on it now sadly <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Georgina. Uh, so um, I, I think we're just up, out of time right now. Uh, one of the last questions is, can we receive the slides? Can we go through the recordings? We will give out some sort of handouts uh, aligned to what was discussed here. Uh, I think there will be no problem about sending you as well, the slides as well on, on this one. So that should be fine. But thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time. I know how busy you guys all are. Again, if you have any query specific to, uh, you know, you receive the notification that you're about to get inspected, get in touch with, um, with SIA, they're there to support you and they are as well our trusted partners on this. Uh, if you have, um, if you, if you want to learn how you can better use Birdie into kind of an, or uh, use Birdie to, um, you know, surface this evidence, improve, uh, improve the, the care quality that you deliver, please get in touch with the Birdie team. The only thing that you need to do is uh, type birdie.care on your Google browser and uh, request a demo. Thank you so much and um, have a nice rest of the week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks all, bye.